Well, boys and girls, it's been about two months since we actually showed off any Toke geckos, and well, there's a good reason for that. There's a reason why I haven't been talking about them really whatsoever. And I feel like I've put it off for just a little bit too long. Instead of talking about it though, why don't I just show you guys? And already coming in with the Toke geckos, we can find. What? You thought I got rid of them all? Why would you think that? Boys and girls, all the tokes are here. As you can see, we got about, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15. We have 15 toke geckos right now. I guess I'm always off when I say 20. Now, it's probably no surprise for you guys that you guys know that uh, Old Dakota is not... Excuse me, Mr. Sassy. Old Dakota has not had the best luck with breeding tokes. We had a, uh, we had a bit of a, a swing and a miss for the past couple of years. And really, I've really been working these past couple of months. Really, I've been talking much about them because I wanted to dial in, perfect my toke gecko seasoning and the cycling to make sure this year does not happen and we make a perfect, well, perfect toke gecko breeding season. And now at first, this is gonna be the game plan. We're gonna keep them in this massive grow tent. We usually have a grow light on for extra heating, but it's already like 82 degrees in here so we don't need any extra one where we're going to cycle the males in these 12 by 18s for the six weeks dry cycle them then get them on a wet cycle and then finally pair it down here with the females but that all changed when one company reached out to me and that is what we are talking about today and that company is zen habitats now they went above and beyond for me so let's dive in a little bit with what we got here right here we got two deluxe stacking spacers these are going to be four foot by two foot it's going to be a little spacer so we can stack the enclosures up on top of that but including that they also <laughs> provided me with four two by two custom black Zen Habitat enclosures. It's like one week straight where the postman probably hated our guts because he kept bringing like two at a time <laughs> to the house. He was like, bro, why don't they all just come at once? Uh, don't ask me, ask Zen Habitats. It's with those brand new stacking spaces and enclosures that we are completely changing this room because of it. No longer will we need to use glass tanks, which you guys know I've hated for a very long time. Doesn't look very professional. They don't work as well as I would like. And obviously I think these are just gonna work a lot better. However, this means this is no longer needed. All these glass tanks with the Tokyo geckos, this can all be scrapped, which means we are pretty much completely redesigning this room to fit these new Tokyo gecko breeding enclosures. With that being said, let's take one final look around at what the room is. The D D Dakota Blue Exotics Basement Cave whatever 1.0, because after this, it is going to be redesigned into 2.0, which I think is just going to be a lot more aesthetically pleasing, a lot more functional, and all in all, just a better option. Let's break it down with exactly what we are planning on doing here. What, what are gonna be the big changes before we do it? I got some buddies coming in about a couple of hours and we are gonna flip this place upside down to how I want it. So pretty much we are gonna be starting here. I think I'm gonna do this beforehand actually. We're gonna break this tent down. We no longer need it. It has a giant hole, so I think I'm just gonna junk it at this point. Move all of these gecko enclosures out of the way for right now. Next up, this tent. The 8x4 is going to come down, the shelving, and all of those glass enclosures are going to be put to the side while we finish building this out. Now at this point we will have this entire wall that will be able, we'll be able to move some stuff. So this is the new idea. With this plan we are going to be stacking Viv and Rex on top of each other. So the PVCs and we'll also be taking this 4x2 Zen and stacking it on top. So we'll put that It'll probably come to about right here. So it'll stack to about here and then we'll get six feet out. And at that point, we are actually going to be putting this enclosure right here on the floor. Now, there's a good reason for that. We actually moved Tim the Frill Dragon upstairs. My girlfriend, you guys saw, there's a YouTube short of it. She, her Frill Dragon got a brand new enclosure. So we moved Tim into uh, the Frill's old enclosure and gave the male Quince Monitor this one. He was growing quite a bit and uh, 
I just have too much going on to focus on. The, the taming will come. I really got to focus on that. There's just so many moving parts this year, but he was getting too big for this 36 by 18 as a taming enclosure. So we ended up moving him into this four by two. Here's the real reason I want to put this on the ground. I've been seeing a lot of really cool, like bioactive planted vivarium builds. Uh, we've got people, Wiccans, Reptiliatus, uh, Herp Time, Serpa Design. Those people are just making really cool enclosures and it's given me the bug, an itch I have to scratch. And that scratch is finally making another really cool cage. We haven't done that in quite a while. I believe the Super Reds enclosure was the last one we actually really care about how the enclosure looked aesthetically. So here's the plan for this. Worrying about how much weight will be on top of Rex's enclosure, we are going to put this exactly on the ground. At that point, I can go grab the 29 tall gallon aquarium that is sitting in my building that is just abandoned for the most part. We're gonna bring that over, put that in here, also make this a planted bioactive vivarium. At this point, when we're on concrete underground, I don't care how much weight, I can fill the 29 gallon all the way. This quince monitor will be able to swim. We'll have it fully planted, pothos hanging down, some standing plants, really making this a nice looking enclosure. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these. I already have the plants picked out, but I'll make it, I wanna make it a surprise for you guys to see it, so it's a big reveal. But I'm really excited about that finally having another really nice I feel like everything over here I want to look very aesthetically pleasing this will now be the new backdrop right sorry I'm rambling I I'm off track so then we'll have the both six foots and the four by two about right it'll stop about right here at this point we'll then put the quince monitors enclosure the zen habitats four by two by four we'll put that right here and then finally on this spot right here we'll go pretty much to this wall we are going to have the brand new toke gecko breeding enclosures those two deluxe spa space spacers and then the four of two by two by two enclosures that'll stack right here so that'll make this pretty much a complete wall of beautiful pvc enclosures that i'm very excited for now we have this wall completely done right which leaves this little l shape here but don't worry i got an idea for that one so I, i'm pretty sure i got the measurements right i might have to remeasure to make sure it fits we should have enough room to put three of these shelving units which is exactly what we have we have one here and then two in there so we'll put all the shelving units on this this side right having all glass the exoterras all the zoom ed and the aquariums on the bottom just aesthetically it'll look better a lot of them will be empty because most of our tokes will be going into breeding groups we'll talk about that a little bit later into those things so we'll have a lot of empty cages but i just think aesthetically cages looks better than just having a cinder block wall right it does leave a lot of empty enclosures and honestly now this might just be an impulse thing, but I'm thinking about putting frogs in there. I really miss having like hobby reptiles, right? Like all of my reptiles right now, they breed for me. They're supposed to make me money. It's part of the business, blah, blah, blah. But stuff like my tarantulas, right? I love my tarantulas. It's just a fun little thing to go when I want to be like, okay, I'm done with reptiles. Let me go to my tarantulas. Let me just do some tarantula stuff. I just don't want to do this anymore. So that was then my idea to start getting some frogs as well. There are smaller species or I would get smaller species so they wouldn't take up as much room. So I don't need to worry about them over birdying like the gecko projects and everything going on here and we'll build like really cool planted bioactive avariums for them so along this wall right here eventually will just be really awesome well designed backgrounded really cool reptile enclosures well i guess amphibian enclosures we'll have just a bunch of really pretty frog uh, species in there. I don't know exactly why. It's just a thought in my head where I'm like, I have a bunch of empty enclosures. Let's do something with it. But let's actually do something with it instead of just shoving another reptile in there. And then finally, that leaves this wall right here. This will be completely bare with the shelving unit over there and the all these enclosures over there. That means we got this whole lawn. And I already have an idea, but that won't be in 2.0. That'll be in 3.0. And I'll explain a little bit right now. That space is going to be used up for my new Caledonian geckos. Now, as much as I hate using aquariums and exoterras for tokes i also hate using 56 quart tubs for the crested geckos these are so annoying they're outdated they look ugly i finally want a change and that's all 2023 is going to be about it's about change we moved places let's not focus on gathering many more animals and just shoving them in bins let's talk about the quality of where we're putting those animals and that's exactly what my plan is 2024 year is going to be absolutely huge not not only do we have nine breeding crested geckos but we also have grow outs that'll be ready next year this includes all the grow outs that we have right here both gargoyle and new cow which i guess is also gargoyle but then we also have everything right here all 
One, two. All 20 enclosures you see right here, these boys will need adult enclosures and will be bringing for us next season. This includes some of our Chihua geckos, gargoyle geckos, crested geckos, and cave geckos. My thought at this point is going to be, Dakota, you got 20 holdbacks that are going to be ready to breed. Do you really need more geckos? Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Instead of stuffing all these guys in more 56 quarts and just having a bunch of those, let's do brand new enclosures for each of the growouts for our future breeders and the breeders that we have right now. This is exactly what we are reserving this wall for. We're going to do a little bit of, of a soft launch, just make sure I like the enclosures, they work well, everything like that. So I think we're starting with, it's like $800, and so I think it's like 10 or 20 of those bins, just to cover those guys right now. So I have about 10 to 20, that'll give us to probably like about here, we're going to stack them up, it's going to be really nice. At that point, if I like them, I'll continue buying to the point where they are stacked floor to ceiling, floor to ceiling all the way through. I think they're going to look absolutely fantastic. Again, that's a little bit later in the season. I want to make sure all my crested geckos are done laying. They're in that winter cycle. At that point, we'll move them before the 2024 breeding season takes off. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen to this area yet. Eventually, especially after the 2024 season, we're looking at like 200 plus eggs, which means 200 babies somewhere around there. We are going to need space for babies. So at this point, this will might stay here. This might move over there, but eventually we're going to need more shelving units to put in here, and this will be like the little nursery area where we'll have all of our baby crested geckos, or really all of our baby geckos. There you got it, boys and girls. Very excited for the changes. New Toke gecko caging, new breeding style. So much change is happening very soon. Fortunately, it looks like I did just get a message that my buddies are here, so I got to go upstairs. We got to start this, but I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.